Hey, good morning and happy Father's Day. Big day, huh? Father's Day? One of my favorite holidays. Very low key, very low pressure. Everything is good. And we, we're blessed with uh, dads with lots of kids, and it's Kids Day in church. Hey, it's family worship day. Yeah, I, I love that. I do, and I, I know some of you kids are wishing we had kids' church. We'll do it next week, but for now, about three or four times a year we do this, and I love having kids among us. It's just a reminder of uh, the good work that Leslie does <laughs> week by week. And for the kids, just let me say this. Be careful this morning. Your parents are watching. Try to set a good example for them. Okay? That would be very good if you would do that. Well, United Way worker uh, found there was a guy in town, a very successful lawyer, Exodus is where we're going to head today. If you want to open your Bible, the book of Exodus will be there in a minute. A very successful lawyer, but they realized he didn't give any money to the United Way. They also knew he didn't attend church anywhere, and they thought he probably doesn't give any money to anybody. And so the United Way worker got his courage up and went to the guy's office and said, Hey, we're having a fun drive. We, would love to, and we know you don't contribute. We, we would love for you to contribute to our cause. And the lawyer said, Well, did you know? that my mother is sick. In fact, she's just about to die. She's been sick for two years, and her medical bills are double what her annual salary is. Did you realize that? And you're not a way worker. No, I'm, I'm, I didn't realize that. And he said, and, went on, and did you also not know, did you realize that my brother is a disabled veteran? He's in a wheelchair, and he's blind, and it, I, he's having a rough time. He, he didn't have enough money. And, and before the United Way worker could apologize, he said, and did you also know that my brother-in-law just died of a massive heart attack? Left my sister with three little kids to raise all by herself. And he said, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't. And then the, the lawyer cut him off again and said, and if I don't give any money to them, what makes you think I'm going to give any money to United Way? That was, yeah, yeah. I must have messed that up. That's pretty funny. <laughs> now, <clears throat> here's the point. Why are some people so, so wicked? Why are some people so hard-hearted? Why are some people so cold? You think about crimes against little kids. And there are crimes against children. What are you, what's wrong? There are crimes against old people. <laughs> you know, there are people that all they do is they call old people on the phone and ask for money. You ever get one of those calls? Hey, your niece is in the jail. I said, well, she's been there before. <laughs> you know, I'm, not, I'm not bailing her out this time. No. <clears throat> there are crimes, there are hideous crimes being committed. There are, you think about the, the, people shooting other people and mass shootings and, and you wonder how do you get to be so hard-hearted well that's the the sermon today from the book of exodus and the story of pharaoh how did pharaoh get to have such a hard heart it was he born that way okay did he, did he hear from his mom did, was it the the environment he lived in is our country so so bad and that's what caused all these people or is it a theological problem between him and god well it's a tough subject and i don't have a lot of great answers for you uh, we're going to look at this before God sent Moses to Pharaoh the first time, he said this, Exodus 4, 21. And we're going to read a little Exodus this morning, about, oh, about 15 verses as we get rolling, so stick with me. The Lord said to Moses, for he was sending him to Pharaoh, when you go back to Egypt, see you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders which I put in, in your power. But I will harden his heart. He will not let the people go. Now, the wonders we're talking about are great miracles. How many, have you ever seen a miracle? Anybody see a miracle? Okay. I'm going to tell you this about miracles. There are few. Even in the Bible. It's a, it's a big book. There's a bunch of miracles in it. I think Jesus performed 37 of them. Okay? But in three years, that's, not, that's just about one a month when Jesus was here, right? So they're, 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 not, they're not common. And God says, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. I'm going to, you're going to perform these miracles. And it, you see a miracle, you ought to go, ah. I mean, that ought to draw you to God. But he said, I will harden his heart. He will be far from me, even though he sees all those miracles. Why the hard heart? Did God cause that, or did Pharaoh do that himself? I love the story in Exodus 7, the first time that Moses appears before Pharaoh. Uh, he throws his stick down. He throws his walking stick down. You know the story? And the story became a snake. And Pharaoh's magicians, by the, I saw a magician the other night. He can do some pretty cool stuff. He can take two little, make one ball, make it two ball, you know, that kind of thing. But these magicians of Pharaoh actually made, their, they threw their sticks down, and their sticks became snakes as well. 
And then Moses' snake ate their snakes. And Moses picked it back up, and it was a stick in his hand. And the Bible says, verse 7, 7, 13, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He did not listen to them as the Lord had said. That, that ought to have made him softer. And then the plagues come, and there are ten of them. I'm going to just read a little snippet of them. The, the Nile River turns to blood. Exodus 7, the magicians did the same with their secret arts, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And he did not listen to them, as the Lord had said. Pharaoh turned and went to his house, and not was even concerned about this at all. <clears throat> the next one is the plague of frogs. That's my favorite plague. God said to Pharaoh, we're going to put frogs all over the land. Now, ever seen a frog where it wasn't supposed to be? Put your toe in the bottom of the sleeping bag, there was a frog there. That's what happened to Pharaoh. Drink that cup of coffee, that first cup of coffee in the morning, get to the end, you know. And t- now, what does that taste? That's frog. There was a snake in my, there was a frog in my boot. And everywhere there were frogs, and finally the frogs are gone. It says this, verse 15, when, 8, 8, 15, when Pharaoh saw there was relief, he hardened his heart. That ought to be enough, don't you think? Frogs everywhere? Didn't listen, as the Lord said. Then there were gnats, think buffalo gnats, Exodus 8, 19. Magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. Even his magic men know this is God. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Then came the flies in Exodus 8, 22. Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also. Then the, the plague of livestock, and the Egyptians' livestock died, and the Hebrews did not. And it says this, Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not even one of the livestock of Israel dead, but the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Didn't even notice and let the people go. And then the boils came. Notice a change in the wording. I had a boil one time. Anybody ever had a boil? Yeah, how was that? By the way, I just, just for the kids, I went right there when I was 12 years old, bigger than a silver dollar, hard as a rock. I went to be thankful that doctors are better than they were in, in my day. I went to Dr. Haynes. <laughs> he took a pair of scissors and jabbed it in there, opened the scissors, and then pushed the pus out of there. And I said, I need a new doctor. This, it's not right. I'm telling you, that thing hurt. And these, well, I don't know how you got that story. <clears throat> it's because of Luke. That's what he, <laughs> and verse, chapter 9, verse 12 says this, And the Lord, for the first time, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. It, it said Pharaoh's heart was hardened. It said Pharaoh hardened his own heart. Now the Lord hardened his heart. He wouldn't listen. Then after the plague of hail, in chapter 9, verse 34, Pharaoh saw the rain, the hail, and the thunder ceased. He sinned again. He sinned, and he hardened his own heart, he and his servants. Then the locust came, and he begged that, he said, if you get the locust out of here, I will, I will let the people go. But it says in verse 20 of chapter 10, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. He did not let the sons of Israel go. Then the darkness came in 1027. The Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. Now we're going to let them go. After nine plagues, Exodus eleven ten summarizes, Moses and Aaron performed all these wonders before Pharaoh, yet the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. He did not let the sons of Israel go out of his land. All right, kids, now here's a question. All right, kids, are you ready? Did Pharaoh harden his heart, or did God harden Pharaoh's heart? Okay, I got, I got several seconds. Anybody say Pharaoh hardened his own heart? <laughs> well, I liked it when the kids were answering better. <clears throat> did, did God predict Pharaoh's behavior, or did God predetermine Pharaoh's behavior? This is a big question. I want to read three more verses, beginning in Exodus 9.34. Now watch this real carefully. When Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail had the thunder ceased, he sinned, and he hardened his heart. Who hardened his heart? He says, he hardened his own heart. How about that? And he didn't, wouldn't let the sons of Israel go. Verse 35, but Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And we don't know who did it this time. Did not let the sons of Israel go, just as the Lord spoke through Moses. Next verse, chapter 10, verse 1, the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh. I, God, have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I may perform these si- signs of mine among them. Here's a question. How do you reconcile the fact that God is king, he is sovereign, he does whatever he wants to, he always gets his way, and the fact that man has responsibility and God is judge? How can God be both king, if he's in charge of everything, and judge and hold us responsible? But God does hold us responsible. He did hold Pharaoh responsible. And in a sense, God hardened his heart. In a sense, Pharaoh hardened his own heart. And so there are two sides of the coin. This is a tough lesson for kids. There's the sovereignty side where God causes all this to happen. And then there's the responsibility side where man's responsible for himself. What we 
we don't like it. We, we don't like paradoxes. We like everything to be simple and one way. We like it either they believe the sovereignty side or the responsibility side. Okay, it is hard for us to believe that that both of those could be true, but the Bible teaches that both of them are true. So imagine that right above here there is a pulley, and over the, and there's a rope over. Can you see the rope going over the pulley? And both both sides of the rope come down, and it's one rope, but it's over the pulley. Are you with me? And it, it's way way, and I can't reach it. It's way up here, and I, both sides. Now, if I, and under, by the way, underneath there, instead of the stage, there's a, there's a pit, and it's full of crocodiles, okay? Man-eating, hungry crocodiles. Now, it, which side of the rope do I need to hold on to to keep from being eaten by the crocodiles? Oh, You've got to hold on to both. If I hold on to one side only, I'm going to hold on the other side. I'm going, either side, won't, you have to hold on to both. And so you have to hold on to the idea that God is sovereign, he's in charge, and also hold on to the idea that man is responsible. And, and so that doesn't work for my mind. And somebody said, it's like put, put the ocean of truth into a thimble-sized brain. Okay, and it, there's going to be some overflow. I'm not going to get it. And I don't understand it all. But I want to talk about three truths that I do understand from this. Number one is this. God's hardening does not come uninvited. It, don't get the idea that Pharaoh was walking along the street one day, minding his business on the way to Sunday school and church, and he's, it's kids' day, and all, it, 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 he's doing everything great, and then all of a sudden, God says, no, I'm going to harden his heart. That is not what happened to Pharaoh. In fact, before God called, at the beginning of God's call of Moses, at the burning bush, Exodus 3.19, I know the king of Egypt will not permit you to go except under compulsion. I know Pharaoh has a hard heart. Not until the sixth plague did God say, I'm going to harden his heart. And so what happens is, it's as if God cements the callousness that's in our hearts. Have you noticed this about old people? You know any old people? Have you noticed this about them? That but sweet people, when they get old, they get sweeter. And cranky people, when they get old, can't get any service. Because <laughs> they get crankier. Now, I... I, I I'm hoping to be a sweet old man. I'm, 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 it's a slow process. I already got the old part. I'm working on the sweet part. Okay? It, what happens is it kind of cements your, your character wherever you are. Romans 1 is God saying this. Everybody is a sinner. Everybody violates God. Even those who way out there, they, what they know about God, they don't, they don't follow. And he says because of that, God gave them over to a depraved mind to wicked sensuality and terrible sins. God gave them over. He, he let them go. He let them have their way. And essentially, that's what happens to Pharaoh. God lets him have his way. Here's the frightening truth. That's not just true of Pharaoh. It's true of us as well. It's true of nations. He said this about Israel in I, Psalm 81. I, the Lord, am your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide. I'll fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice. Israel did not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their heart to walk in their own devices. So God designed the rebellious heart to get rock hard. These acts of God should have melted his heart, but they didn't do it. <clears throat> this week, a little warm for you? Anybody? I, I, can I just get see the hands of those who love hot weather? Or really? Did you love it this week? Yeah, I, 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 honestly, I do. Of course, I work inside. Okay, if, if I worked outside, I might not, but I, I love hot weather. In fact, I got ready to go out. I like to go out and read the Bible on my porch in the morning. It's too cold this morning. Okay, bring back the heat. That's my prayer. Bring back the heat. <clears throat> Imagine this. Remember the day it was 100 degrees? Remember that? And he made it was up. It was lovely. If you go outside on the sidewalk, if you were to crack an egg on the sidewalk, it might fry on a day like that. What if you did this? What if you went out there on that sidewalk and, and you get from your refrigerator, you took a stick of butter and put it on the sidewalk, and beside that you put a lump of moist clay, put them both on the sidewalk. You know what's going to happen? Well, you, you know that, that, that butter through the sun, psh, it's gone. It's just going to melt away. It's going to be soft, but the clay will get hard as a rock. And the very sunshine of God, the miracles of God that should have melted Pharaoh's heart, hardened him because he had a hard heart. And God's hardening does not come uninvited. Here's a second truth. God's hardening doesn't have to be fatal. doesn't have to be final. Just because God hardens a heart doesn't mean the person cannot repent. Don't get the idea that Pharaoh had no choice and no chance. 
me show you this, Exodus 10.1. The Lord said to, to Moses, go to Pharaoh. I have hardened his heart. I have also hardened the heart of his servants, that I may perform these signs among them. Then in verse 7, six verses later, Pharaoh's servants said, how long will this man be a snare to us? Let the man go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not realize that Egypt is destroyed? Pharaoh's servants were hardened, but then their hearts were melted. So having a hard heart doesn't mean it has to stay that way. Three times, if you read Exodus 8, 9, and 10, God says through Moses to Pharaoh, if you let my people go. You know what that means? He had a choice. He could let them go if he had chosen that. Pharaoh had the freedom to do the right thing. God's hardening is not uninvited. It's not necessarily fatal. And God's heart hardening does not thwart the plan of God. If Pharaoh had repented and done right, then God would have let the people go easily. But because he said, I'm not going to re repent, I'm, I'm going to get harder, then God used that in his plan as well. God's so powerful, he can even use rebellion in his plan. Exodus 9, verse 15, If by now God says to Pharaoh, I put forth my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, you would have then been cut off from the earth. But indeed, for this reason, I allowed you to remain to order to show you my power or to proclaim my name throughout all the earth. God was glorified even through the hardening of the heart. That passage, by the way, is quoted in, in Romans chapter 9, where he says this, What shall we say then? Hey, there's, no there's no injustice with God. Is there? May it never be. For he says to Moses, I'll have mercy on whom I have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. And then he quotes that verse from Exodus. It does not depend on the man who wills or the one who runs, but God has mercy. But the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this purpose I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you, that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. So then he has mercy on whom he desires, and he hardens whom he desires. Three quick affirmations about this sovereignty of God. Number one, God's sovereignty is beyond question. He rules, he's in charge, he doesn't have to explain himself to anybody. Romans 9, 19 goes on to say, you'll say to me, then why does he still find fault? For who resists his will? On the contrary, who are you, O man, who answers back to God? The thing molder will not say to the molder, why'd you make me like this, will it? We are simply not confident to call the creator into question. His sovereignty is beyond question. Michelangelo, working on the St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, was questioned by his workers. They said, this isn't, this isn't very beautiful. This isn't working out. And he said this to them, even if I were able to make my plans and ideas clear to you, which I cannot do, he said, I'm not obliged to do so. Just go to work, and when it's all through, you'll see it worked out pretty well. And God has a plan, and it works out well. His sovereignty is beyond question. He doesn't need our permission. He just needs our trust. God's mercy is beyond fairness. Now, we, we think about God not being merciful, but God was so merciful uh, to ten times. God showed him miracles and said, now would you let my people go? All right, dads. And I, I know this about dads. Our best trait, our best trait is not patience. Anybody? Any, any fellows? I, 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 probably, probably. Julie says I don't have any patience at all. I, I got about that much. And I really have about all I want. <laughs> That's the problem. I, really, I need more, but I don't really want, because I like things just going my way. And so, Dad, you got a, let's say you have a 10-year-old, and you tell your 10-year-old son, here's what I'd like you to do. And the 10-year-old says, Dad, I don't, I don't want to do that. And I always told my kids, that's okay. You don't have to want to do it. We're not talking about how you feel. I just want you to do it. How many chances did you give that 10-year-old? When I get home from work today, I, I want this to be done. Okay. All right, Dad, anybody ever say that? I get home from work, I want this to be done. And you get home, and, and the boy says, oh, I, I didn't want to do it, and I didn't do it. Maybe tomorrow. Okay, I'll give him another chance. H how many days are you going to do that? Luke, how many days would we do that at our house? We did not do any days. We, uh, we're like, this is the deal, and now, and, and, if it, and if you don't do this when I'm home at 5 o'clock today, uh, then you know it's not going to be pleasant. It will be most unpleasant. And God said to Pharaoh, I want you to let my people go. And Pharaoh said, I don't want to do that. And so God said, well, let me just show you this. And he turns to now a river into blood, and he comes back and said, hey, you want to let him go? But Pharaoh's heart was hardened. God was merciful ten times over to Pharaoh. 
Robert Ingersoll, a famous, famous atheist, came to America from England, and he, he would have these lectures and why you can't believe the Bible and God's not true and all those kind of things. And one day, he, he took off his watch and put it on a podium and said this, I want to prove to you that there is no God. He said, I, I defy the God of the universe that you claim to follow, and if there is a God, I just dare him. I challenge him, strike me dead in the next five minutes, and looked at his watch. And for five minutes, the place was utterly silent as they watched to see if he would croak. After five minutes, he stood back up and said, I'm still here. There's your proof. There's no God. On the way out of the building that night, a young man said to an older lady, boy, Ingersoll really proved something tonight, didn't he? And the older lady said, yes, he did. He, he proved that even the worst infidel cannot exhaust the patience of God in five minutes. Now, that's really true. God is so patient with us, way beyond fairness. Romans 9, 18, he has mercy on whom he desires, he hardens those he desires. We focus on the hardening, but we ought to focus on the mercy. That's the most puzzling part. And God's wisdom is also beyond understanding. It's a paradox. God is sovereign. We're responsible. I don't know how to figure all that out. But Romans eleven thirty three 33 says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, unfathomable his ways. Now, we've talked a lot about the hardness of, hardening of heart, of Pharaoh's heart. And who hardened Pharaoh's heart? Did God harden Pharaoh's heart? Did Pharaoh harden his own heart? And how, and how do you make those? The, the Bible says God hardened his heart. The Bible says Pharaoh hardened his heart. How do those things jab together? I just don't know. But I do know this. Hardening of the heart does not happen overnight. It's a slow, gradual, imperceptible problem and the question is and i said all that to say this how about your heart is it right with god that's the thing that counts today how about your heart are you soft toward god or has your heart become hard toward him let me just give you out of the gospels jesus enemies their hearts grew hard mark three after looking around at them with anger he was grieved at the hardness of their heart, and then he healed the man. People witnessed his miracles. John 12, he said, he has blinded their eyes. He's hardened their heart. Even the miracles didn't convince them. Even Jesus' disciples, from time to time, had hard hearts. Chapter 8, verse 17, aware of this, Jesus said, Why do you discuss the fact that you have no bread? Do you not see or understand? Do you have a hardened heart? Even after the resurrection, Mark chapter 16, Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at table. He reproached them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he rose from the dead. Three times the book of Hebrews quotes Psalm 95, 8. It's in chapters 3 and 4. And then one of those is Hebrews 3, 15. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoke me. How about your heart? Is it right with God? Are you soft toward him? Do, do you, when you hear the word of God, does it just roll off you like off a turtle's back? Does, does it make no difference? Does it not sink in anymore? How about your heart? Petra saying, don't let your heart be hardened. Don't let your love grow cold. Keith Green saying, my eyes are dry, my faith is old, my heart is hard, and my prayers are cold. I know how it ought to be, alive to, God, to you and dead to me. What can be done for an old heart like mine? Soften it up with oil and wine the oil is you the spirit of love please wash me anew with the wine of your blood how about your heart let's pray together as you bow your heads would you just ask that question the bible says search me O god and see if there's any wicked way in me would you ask god where your heart is is your heart soft toward god are you pliable or are you becoming hardened toward him Father, there's beauty in the silence as we speak to you and know that you hear us. Father, I, I'm thankful for the children. So thankful for little ones whose hearts are open to you. Help us to have the heart of a child open to you. And Father, keep us close. And if we, help us do whatever we need to do to break up the hard ground. 
Thank you for the example of Pharaoh. Father, it didn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way with us either. Father, thank you for your grace and your mercy that's beyond our understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.